So today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is seeds. And today we're going to just cover a little bit because we're not going to be able to fit all of this on one video. And um, we're going to start off just by talking a, a little bit about when I start doing my seedlings. When do I plant outside? What are my favorite things to grow? Where do I buy my seeds? And lots more. So stay tuned because hopefully we can cover a lot of your questions that you might have. Okay, so one of the first things that I tell people what I do is that I keep a seed journal. So what I do is every year I write down when I start my seedlings and the outcome of it, just so that I know for the next year what works and what doesn't work and what I like and what I don't like, so that it gives me a reference to go by for the next year. So last year, for instance, I never started any of my seeds until April the 2nd which works out for us because I typically don't put anything in the garden until around June, between June 10th and June 15th, just because our climate up here is a little bit different, more of a zone four, and we still have a chance of frost until just after that time. Uh, you can see here, um, some of my notes that I made was, you know, I planted 60, only 14 came up. Um, another one here, Let's see, I planted on April the 9th, I planted my calendula and it says too early, one to two weeks later. So that's a note that I can make for this year is that I'm gonna go one to two weeks later um, after April the 19th, sorry, after April the 9th and I'll plant them a bit later. So sometimes when you plant seeds and they're a bit, they can get a bit too lanky or long or they're more prone to disease or aphids because they're trapped in like a little pot too long. There's another um, little notes that I make about things like about the tomatoes that I grow. I, I write down the types of tomatoes I grow on the certain dates and I say make little notes about what I like about them and what I don't like about them. So I know that I don't really want to grow them next year or if I do um, I can remember which one are my favorites so that and that's kind of how I end up with a lot of seeds because I do find things like I want to try some new things so anyway it's handy to have a little seed book and just a little journal um, just about your gardening um, because sometimes what works this year might not work next year too so just making notes every year I don't know I find it a good reference to go by Okay, so another thing to figure out is when is the best, like optimal time for you to plant your seedlings outside? So the best temperature, um, when the soil's not too wet and when your chance of frost is gone. So what I do is I take that date generally, I mean, give or take a few days, but then I write down in my journal when to, or how much time my seedlings need to grow. So for instance, on a general note, we know that tomatoes and peppers I can plant at the same time. I've made a note of that and they need eight to 10 weeks for growing. So I know that if my, say I'm gonna plant on June 15th, I'm gonna backtrack and see when eight to 10 weeks is from June the 15th and plant, start my seeds then. We know that my cabbage only needs six to eight weeks and so I backtrack and figure out the dates when that is. Greens need about four to six weeks, so they can be planted a lot soon, like a lot later um, in the year. So keeping track of those things I find really helpful and can really help you have a really good garden and a good outcome. So another question that I get quite often is where do I buy my seeds? Most of the time it's usually online or through catalogs. I like the variety that um, other places have rather than just going to, you know, the superstore or something like that and buying my seeds. And I, you know, just because of our zone and the 
we have a really short growing season here. Um, I like to try to get um, item specific that will grow in my climate and in the days that I need it to grow. So sometimes if you go to just the store, you don't know how many days it takes for something to fully mature. So a lot of the times seed catalogs are the best way to go. And this is one of my favorite, uh, high mowing. And you can go here and you can just research uh, different things and it'll tell you like um, how many days it takes to grow. I typically in my zone is zone four, uh, need between 60 and 70 days. And for most things that's okay, but for tomatoes, it's really hard to find tomatoes that grow in, and mature within 60 to 70 days. But if you do your research and look at different catalogs, different seed companies, you can actually find things that really suit your environment and what you need. Okay, so my, some of my favorite um, companies that I go to, if you're looking for places that I use, Hawthorne Farms is kind of local for here. It's, uh, it well is local, it's Ontario, but um, it's a really good company. High Mowing Seeds is another one of my favorite companies that I use a lot. Um, the nice thing about high mowing is that you can actually buy things in bulk. Like I get my corn seeds, not in like little packets you might get at the store, but in one pound bags. So that's kind of convenient too depending on how much you want to grow. Um, another one of my favorite is the Baker Creek. You can get their catalog or you can go online. Tomato Fest is another great place to go for a variety of tomatoes. I like them because I can go on and find short season tomato tomatoes and just kind of go through their website and just only find ones that are good for about 60 to 70 days. And you can even get um, bush beef steaks in that time frame, which most of the time short season are tend to be smaller tomatoes and my gardener is also another one of my favorite places to get stuff and he has a great youtube and website that i go to quite often too uh, to learn a little bit more if i don't know something and west coast seeds now these aren't the only ones that i use these are just the ones i have on hand right now but they have a good variety of things so when you're planting, find out what you like about, like, what do you like about tomatoes? Do you like that they're big? Do you like that some are black or pink or yellow? Do you like cherries? These are different things. Like if you do, your, if you look and, and read up on things, you can find a lot more uh, varieties are out there than just, oh, I just want a tomato that's red. That's the kind of fun thing I have about, you know, in the winter is just researching and finding what's new and what's different. And what I do like about these seed companies is that they're organic. So why put the effort and work into gardening if you're not going to have an organic food at the end? And heirloom, they're here and they're 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 in plentiful. Like and my gardener, he like he loves heirloom um, plants. So you know you're getting kind of like an older variety of something, which is kind of cool, and things that you just can't find um, at your local grocery store. So these are just some of the places that I like to use and uh, I hope that you check them out because I think you'll be really happy with them. So another great question that people have is when they're looking at seed catalogs, especially like tomatoes because there's so much a variety of things, is like they don't know how to read um, the the information. Like people ask what's what's a determinant tomato plant compared to an indeterminate tomato plant. Well, determinate tomato plants are more of like a bush tomato. So they tend not to grow um, past a certain height. They're more of, and they don't tend to have as many fruit. They might have fruit that clusters more or they just grow in a, a shorter uh, tomato where a tomato plant, I should say, where an indeterminate tomato plant will just keep growing really tall, really tall, really tall until it just can't grow no more. And it keeps producing good yields of tomatoes and those are typically the ones that I tend to grow um, the thing is with indeterminates you do need to stake them and there is there are some types of tomatoes even in the catalog that says semi-determinate so you're going to get maybe um, a taller growing tomato so these are little things that I've learned over the years because I didn't even know that those differences even existed in the tomato world so as you kind of get more and more into gardening, there's so much more information that uh, you just got to learn along the way. The other thing is people ask, what's the difference between a hybrid and an heirloom? 
and all that. That's something that maybe and hopefully I can get to talk to you about in a different video because it's quite extensive. But basically, um, a hybrid type of seed is more of a seed that you're kind of guaranteed to get the specific plant that you want to have and fruit that you want to have. And it's been, it's, you can't really save seed from it. Or if you did, you might not get the exact variety that's in this catalog. So, and then, and then the heirloom is one you can save seeds from in anyways, it is kind of a bit of an in-depth discussion. Hopefully at some point I can cover, kind of cover those basics because it can be, you know, to the, the new beginner gardener, it can be kind of intimidating, but, um, there is lots of information out there if you want to, you know, search for it, but hopefully I can cover that for you at some point in the near future. Anyways, we're going to get on to planting seeds. So as you can see here, I do have um, a bit of a seed problem. It's not such a bad problem, really. I mean, I'm growing food. How can you go wrong? So I do tend to, you know, these are basically the ones I planted last year in my leftovers. These are my new ones for this year that I ordered. Um, these are some that I winter sowed in uh, outdoors, which I'm going to have a video to show you soon on that. These are all the seeds here that I saved from my garden last year. So there are my own seeds that I saved from the garden, like butternut squash, buttercup squash, tomatoes. Again, these I saved, um, these are hollyhock. We get into flowers at some point. And then these are other just um, other seeds that I have, some that I, you know, decided I don't really like, but uh, I just can't help myself. I don't know what's wrong. And I can't bring myself to throw them out. <laughs> Anyways. Here is just a few of some of my favorite seeds in the packs. And um, these are not all that I grow, trust me. So you can see here, these are probably the ones that I definitely do grow every year. So I can give you a list. What I'll do is maybe put a list up on the screen. Um, some of my favorites that I use, where I get them and uh, then maybe it'll help you out if you're into, you know, this is, oh, this one here. This is my favorite. Oh, and I can't get it anywhere now. It's one of my favorite lettuces. I got it, I don't know, like two, three years ago. And it's called Devil's Ear. And it is one of the best lettuces I ever grew. It was large. It didn't bolt, didn't go to seed too early. Because most lettuces will bolt um, with the heat of the summer. This one... The reason why I think it's so hard to come by is because it doesn't bolt and um, bolt, sorry, and you can't get seeds from it. But this, it's a nutty, crispy flavor, and I just, it's, I love it. Um, anyway, so I just had to mention that because I just can't seem to find it anywhere now. But uh, these are just some that I do grow quite often. This is another really nice one here, um, Shindikiwa Cucumber. This is another one of my favorites. Um, it's a sun gold cherry tomato. It's kind of, I think it's more like a yellow orange, but it is super sweet. It is so good. And it grew right until frost last year. It just, it does so well. Um, Royal Burgundy Bush Bean is another one of, I don't know if you can see that, it is another one of my favorite beans. It is a purple bean, but when you cook it, it turns green. So it's typically a green bean, but I've grown, and I still do grow some yellow and green beans too, but you'll get double, if not triple the amount of beans off of one of these plants compared to a green or a yellow bush. So it is a bush bean, so tasty. And I did do, I did can some of these last year and they did work out well. Who gets kiss corn is a really good corn too. Um, but I found that some years it doesn't do well, but it is really tasty and it, it does well. This is a new one that I tried last year, Allure, and it was so sweet and we got tons of corn. So I'm definitely going to keep growing this one. It was really good. Um, anyways, there's lots, there's so much. I mean, I love the black cream tomato. It's one of my favorite. I love Swiss chard. I can't go wrong. I got to grow it every year. My husband, he is a huge rutabaga fan. So we stick to Laurentian. It's a really good one. Um, another one that my daughter really likes 
is the yellow zucchini and we make a lot of yellow um, we make a lot of zucchini soup from it it's so tasty and hopefully maybe I can do a video on how to make this zucchini soup because it is delicious so we grow a lot of that and we freeze it as well and it works really well for the soup um, this is another really good lettuce not as good as the devil's ear but it is a really good one too and it's from high mowing seeds so anyways i'll get a list up on the screen shortly and uh, if you have any more questions feel free to comment